Call of Duty has been the top dog in the arena shooter space for a long time now. It's been many, many, many years since Halo held that top spot, and really ever since the early 2010s, Call of Duty has been at the peak when it comes to the arcade arena shooter. They've had some competition in the past, but really, at the end of the day, Call of Duty has always remained supreme. Well, this year, with the release of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we are finally seeing potentially some cracks in the armor of Activision. And if you want to know why that is, then give this video a like. My name is Buckeye. Let's get into this. After being able to put a good bit of time in the brand new Call of Duty so far, I've been able to kind of come to the conclusion that yes, this is an improvement over Modern Warfare 2 in really a lot of ways. The overall gameplay side of things for Modern Warfare 3 feels really good. I like the movement, the slide canceling is really good, and the gunplay feels really nice with now the longer time to kill. Sometimes it can feel like it's maybe a little bit too long, but I mean, overall, the time to kill is a huge change between this game in Modern Warfare 2. In Modern Warfare 2, you basically hit a headshot and you get a kill, but here in MW3, you really do have to hit your shots in order to get the kill, and it really makes you focus more on your gunplay and individual engagements, and it's just, a, it's an interesting change that I think is working really, really well. And I think this is a pretty well-received opinion from a lot of people in the community. I think so far, most people actually enjoy Modern Warfare 3 a good bit. In comparison to Modern Warfare 2, I was watching TP and he was saying on launch day that yeah, he's having a better time on Modern Warfare 3 than he did on Modern Warfare 2 during the same time frame. You know, and we would hope that this would be the case, right? Because Sledgehammer made so many changes and so many reversions, if you will, to Modern Warfare 3 that we haven't had in the game for a while. Like map voting, that's been awesome. Being able to see what maps we have in an opportunity to play for a match has been so good to experience. It's something that uh, I never thought that I would miss necessarily, but when it was gone, it sucked. And now that it's back, it feels awesome to be able to choose what map you want to play. It gives you a little bit of an endorphin hit before you actually go into the match, which is kind of nice. And then just having a properly utilized mini map now is also really good. You actually can track where people are going to be on the map now, which is pretty awesome. I mean, just overall, when I'm breaking all this down, the gameplay from Modern Warfare 3 is good. It's a good time. The question is, you know, is this really a DLC or is this a new game? Eh, We'll get to that at a later time here on the channel, but overall, the game plays well. And by the way, if you want to see more content about Modern Warfare 3 and its gameplay just like this, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for post notifications on all of the content. I'd appreciate that. Now, I'm going to be honest, one of the main reasons why I did not like playing Modern Warfare 2 in the grand scheme of things, I like the gameplay in Modern Warfare 2, but the thing that turned me off every single day when I played that game was the maps. And so far, here in Modern Warfare 3, I haven't played all of the maps yet, but I've played a good bit of them so far, and I would have to say, man, the maps have been really, really refreshing, because even some of the maps that aren't necessarily the best in this game, they're still totally fine and still play really well. And my experience so far in the maps has been that of positivity, and I actually enjoy going into each of these maps. There's also a nice variety, a, a little bit, not, not a bunch of variety, but a little bit of variety in terms of their color palette. We have a couple snow maps, which personally, just for me, I really love snow maps, so, so that's a nice little thing there. But these maps play really, really well with the gameplay changes that we have, and just overall, I, the way that I look at it is these are maps that were designed way back in the day when map design was looked at from a different perspective and i think that they hold very true today they play really well by the way this is my first time playing most of these maps in modern warfare 3. i never played the original modern warfare 2 back in 2009. most of these maps minus a couple that have been remade since then i've never played these maps before so this is a first experience for me and i'm having a great time on them they really do make the overall experience of playing this game that much better it's it's actually crazy the difference of having a good map makes because when you go into the match and you know you're going on a good map you already have a better mental perspective of what's going to happen right you're feeling better but if you know that you're going into a map that sucks you already have a negative connotation of what's going to occur and i think that's a really important thing to recognize here giving people a better mental state before they go into the match already gives them a better opportunity to have a good time and so far that has been working really well with the maps in Modern Warfare 3. Now, if you want to catch me play these games live on these brand new maps, then check out my Twitch. The link is in the description. I stream Fridays and Saturdays every week, Friday and Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Give me a follow on Twitch. I'd really appreciate seeing you there. Now, I've just told you a lot of positive things about the brand new Call of Duty, but let me kind of turn it to the other side now and bring the idea 
of some negative aspects because I'm going to be honest, there are some very strong negatives with this game right now, and it makes it hard to recommend purchasing the game for somebody when you know that they're going to have to spend $75 basically after you include taxes in most places on this brand new game from Sledgehammer. Now, obviously, I just talked about a lot of positive things, but these negatives are really, really strong. And I think the biggest one that I want to discuss today is the bugs. Here's the thing. This is a brand new AAA release from the biggest arena arcade shooter out on the market, Call of Duty. And the bugs that are in this game right now are really bad and genuinely game breaking. And I personally have experienced multiple of these. I've experienced three specific bugs that are really, really bad and things that I've rarely experienced in gaming, let alone from a AAA developer like Sledgehammer and publisher Activision. Probably the biggest bug for me is that to this date, every single match that I have played in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, at the end of the match, instead of having the normal final score come up with the kill cam or something like that at the end of the game, no. What I get is a slideshow PowerPoint presentation of the last moments of the match. There, I mean, it was kind of clean. Uh. Uh. Do you. Do you. Do you get. Do you guys see what's going on in my game right now? I'm literally saying it goes down to like one frame per second. The graphic never comes up on the screen and it just, the audio goes berserk. It starts just throwing out some crazy audio sounds and then the match ends. basically crashes the game. It doesn't crash the overall game itself, but the end of the game basically just has a massive spaz and then you go back to the post game lobby. It happens every single time and I'm not the only one who has experienced this People in my Twitch chat have told me that this is a well-known issue that Sledgehammer is aware of right now and it's on their to-do list, if you will, but this is a huge, huge bug. I have yet to see a regular post-match report at the end of the game. I haven't seen it once since playing this game. Every single match breaks at the end, every single time. Doesn't matter if I'm playing on regular multiplayer or on war mode, doesn't matter. It always does the same thing. I've tried restarting all the things. It doesn't work. It breaks every single game. That's only one bug. And then another bug that I've been getting literally does not allow me to change my controller layout. When I go into the settings of Modern Warfare 3 and I try to go to my controller input, right? My layout, my controller button. I've been trying to turn off tack stance. I really hate tack stance. I think it's, it's horrible. It's, it gets in my way when I slide. I don't like tack stance. So I go in there and I try to turn it off. But the second that I open up the controller button layout and I try to go down, I hit the down button on my left stick on my controller and it crashes the whole settings page and it kicks me back out to the loadout page. Guys, listen, I have so many bugs in my build of Modern Warfare 3. Watch this. If I go over here to my controller settings, right? I want to see what my controller settings are, right? I, I, I press it down. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to press down on my trigger to go down on the settings. Bugs out. It bugs out. Every single time I have not been able to go in and change my controller layout. I haven't been able to touch any setting related to my controller. It's completely broken. It won't work. And believe it or not, there's another huge problem that has been happening with this game as well. And it has been the server issues. There have been a number of really bad server problems on this game so far. I've been getting really, really bad packet loss. In fact, I had a whole game completely disconnect because it just just literally freaked out in the middle of the game. Like it was running pretty well. And then in the middle of the game, it just absolutely freaked out. The game froze. I was kind of moving around like this. I couldn't do anything. The packet loss was going absurd and the game eventually crashed. And that has been an experience that I've been getting a lot on this game so far. I've only crashed once, but I've been getting a lot of really bad packet loss, especially when I played on war mode. War mode was really bad. Every single match, it was constantly like that. It was very difficult to be able to actually play the match because you're effectively fighting the game in order to play the game. The game's kind of playing you if you really think about it. It's been a difficult time on this game so far. And that's what I'm trying to get across is like, there are a lot of really positive things about the game so far that are really fun and contribute to a good gameplay experience, which is what I've been saying for a while, by the way. But these bugs that are in the game right now are so bad, it literally makes it like impossible for me to recommend to somebody, yeah, you should purchase this game because, <laughs> 
These bugs are kind of insane. Now, real quick, put your tinfoil hat on with me, okay? Because the people that I've talked to in my Twitch chat who have purchased the Vault Edition have not experienced these problems, which is kind of funny. I did not get the Vault Edition, uh, and I've been experiencing these problems. Some people that have bought the Vault Edition have not experienced these problems. So you, you tinfoil hatters out there, go ahead and look into that as you will. Obviously, that has nothing to do with that. I just wanted to mention it. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is with this game having a 16 month development cycle, which, by the way, Call of Duties are usually made in three years. And there was a report that came out recently that said that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was actually made in 16 months. That is absolutely why this game feels like a glorified DLC. In fact, many of the developers thought that it was going to be an expansion to Modern Warfare 2. And well, you can kind of pick up on where a lot of those things have happened with the release of this game. It does in fact feel like a little bit of an extension of Modern Warfare 2 instead of its own new game. The campaign was terrible. It literally felt like they just cut pieces of the Warzone map and said, here's your story. And that was it. I actually uninstalled the campaign after playing for a few hours because I didn't want to finish it. It was so bad. You know, and the fact of the matter is, is that this game visually looks really, really similar to Modern Warfare 2. It shares a lot of the same sort of visual aspects to it. And it really sucks because like I said, the gameplay is actually really good and I enjoy playing it a lot. And I've been saying this for a long time. I think the gameplay of Modern Warfare 3 is gonna be strong enough to keep people playing, but a lot of the noise around it has been really weird, man. It's been very peculiar. And if you're Activision right now, you have to be looking at this from a very like alert perspective, right? Because X Defiant is gonna be coming out here eventually, right? But why has X Defiant not come out yet? Because they're fixing all of the bugs and they're trying to polish this game as much as they can. I mean, Mark Rubin has been saying multiple times that they want the game to be in a working state when it comes out and they want to avoid having a rushed release. Well, here we are with Modern Warfare 3 and the core of the game feels really good, but there's so many problems around it and it's absolutely kind of tainting its perspective, I think, from a lot of people. And if I'm Activision, that is a problematic situation to be in. And I hope that Sledgehammer is able to knock out some fixes for these bugs quickly so we can go on and have a good time with this game because the post-launch support is going to be really solid for this game. I'm excited to see what comes in season one here soon. We're getting three brand new maps with that on top of the maps we've already got in the game right now, which are really solid. I think the future is bright for Modern Warfare 3 and I'm excited to be in part of it, but there's a lot of problems right now that really need to be addressed if you're Activision. You can't do this again, and uh, we're going to see what happens moving forward. But speaking of Sledgehammer, if you want to see some of the good stuff that they've been doing, because there have been some really great stuff that Sledgehammer has done with Modern Warfare 3, then check out this video on screen now.